CSS media queries are the key to making your websites responsive. When I first learned about media queries, they completely changed the way I built websites. Let me guide you step by step on how to use them to ensure your site looks great on any device. So let's jump in and learn CSS media queries. Happy learning! We start off with a very simple HTML page containing an h1 heading and a text paragraph. It's important that we set the viewport meta tag for the media queries to work. And now it's time to jump into the CSS code and write our first media query. Media queries always start with at media. Then in parentheses we define a min width of 500 pixels. This means the browser window must be at least 500 pixels wide for this media query to be activated. And now we can write CSS rules inside the media query, which will override the normal CSS rules when the media query is activated. Let's set the text color of the body to red and take a look at the browser. And we will see that the text is red because the width of the browser is 768 pixels which is more than the 500 pixels min width of our media query. Now let's change the width of the browser a little bit and we will notice that as soon as the width drops below 500 pixels, the color changes to black because the condition of the media query, min width of 500 pixels, isn't true anymore. And when the width of the browser is above 500 pixels, the color turns to red again. With media queries, you can also control the device type for which the media query should be applied. This media query, for example, would only be applied to the printed version of the page. If we want the media query to work for all device types, we have to use the all keyword. And if we only want to target screens, we have to use the screen keyword. It's also possible to define multiple conditions in a single media query. To add another condition, we just have to use the and keyword and then write the other condition. Let's add a second condition, max width 600 pixels. Now our media query only gets activated if the screen is between 500 and 600 pixels wide. Let's try it out in the browser and as you can see, at 599 pixels, the color turns to red. And at 499, it turns to black again. Okay, now you understand the basics about media queries. It's time to practice them with a real world example. Here we have a website with a website header, a content area, and a sidebar. And we will use media queries to optimize the layout for different screen sizes. Okay, let's create our first media query. We want the sidebar to be full width on small devices. So we create a media query with max width 700 pixels and set the the width of the sidebar to 100%. Take a look at the browser. As soon as the width is below 700 pixels, the sidebar will be full width and displayed below the content area. Let's also disable the border of the sidebar to make it look more beautiful. And now let's set order to minus one to make the sidebar appear on top of the page above the header. We also want to decrease the size of the title in the header. So we set the font size of the H1 to 40 pixels. Let's define another media query for very small devices smaller than 450 pixels. And let's decrease the padding of content and sidebar to 10 pixels to give more space to the content. Congratulations, you have now created your first responsive website. And we have reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and learned a lot. To support my work, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to not miss any content about learning to code. So have a great day and happy learning.